Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another episode of Model Railway News, this time of course for August and I'm absolutely blown away that we're here again already for August, it doesn't seem five minutes since I did the last one. Anyway, loads and loads of news and updates for you. It's actually amazing how many new things happen every single month in this hobby. It's very exciting, isn't it? So lots to get through, lots of exciting stuff. Let's crack on the same way I always do to begin with, with a little bit of an announcement from Hornby. So in terms of the new stock from Hornby, it's quite minimal this month, except for the launch of quite a major new range, which is of course the Harry Potter range, which is all now in stock. Now it includes quite a lot of different products. The Hogwarts Castle locomotive, is probably the most interesting. It includes the coaches, which you can buy individually, Hogsmeade station buildings, platform nine and three quarters, and of course the train sets. I think that's the sort of crowning glory of the whole range. So the train set is interesting for two reasons, really. First of all, it includes a re-railer, and that is not something that I've ever seen in a Hornby train set before. Either I'm just out of the loop, or that's the first time they've done it. But yes, it's a tool that allows you to put coaches and rolling stock, and also the engine, I suppose, onto the track without faff, which I know is something that beginners do struggle with, so that's really, really cool. The second reason the set is interesting, though, is due to the price. The price is quite hefty on this, £199.99. So basically £200 for the train set, which to me sounds like an incredible amount of money to spend on a train set. So I thought in order to try and explain this a bit more, we'd take a look at the train set and see what you actually get inside, which might justify that massive price. So looking at the contents then, the first thing that came to my attention was the coaches. As you can see in the Hornby train set, there are just two coaches, whereas in the movies there was very definitely four. So call me Mr. Pedantic if you will, but if you're going to be spending £200 on a novelty train set from a movie, surely you want the complete train set. £200 seems an awful lot to spend on just half a train, so either way, I guess it's not the coaches that are dragging the price up on that. No, of course, it is the loco that is dragging up the price. As you can see here, it is available on its own for £109.99. Now, for those of you who don't know much about this loco, it's actually a model that's been available from Hornby for quite a long while in a few different guises. In fact, I've got one here. It is a railroad model, which means it's in the sort of uh, cheap Hornby range, if you like, designed for beginners or whatnot. Here's one here. This one's Adderley Hall in actually quite a, a more complex livery than the Hogwarts Castle was except I bought this brand new from one of the retailers for £49, so we're talking less than half the price there. And then I have this one which is in, I think, very much the same livery as the Hogwarts uh, Castle engine. This one's Alton Hall, which I once again bought brand new for £50. So we're talking more than double the price, as I say, for this new Hornby Loco, which seems to me pretty crazy. So let's take a look and see actually what the differences are between these railroad versions of the same Loco and the Hogwarts Castle one. Well, first of all, quite obviously, there is an LED in the front there, and I mean that literally, it is just an LED, an unsightly LED that's been crowbarred into the smoke box door. There's no proper lamp on it or anything like that, as there was on the real engine. It really is just an LED. Apart from that, obviously, I don't own the Hogwarts Castle engine, so I'm not 100% sure, but it seems that the, the only other difference is the Harry Potter branding. Now, obviously, yes, the licensing will have been reasonably expensive, I suppose, for it, but to justify more than double the price, I'm not 100% sure, so pretty crazy stuff, I would say. And by the way, it isn't just Hornby's price that is more than double what these have been sold for before. Even the retailers are selling these for £99 now, the Hogwarts version. So yeah, I'm not really sure I understand that. It is also worth mentioning that at the time of filming this video, it seems it is just the train set that's currently available, although there's no doubt that the rest of the range will soon to follow. I thought it would just be wise to talk about it now while it's so prominent. Also available from Hornby then is a new selection of rolling stock. Uh, there's quite a lot to see, so do check out the link in the description if you'd like to see more. One thing that caught my attention was a uh, quite a tasty looking Cadbury Bourneville wagon, which I quite like the look of, so I might have to get that for some more of my sweets and chocolate trains. There's also been obviously another addition of the engine shed since I last did a model railway news video. Uh, quite a few interesting things to see there as well, including I think the first sample of the Hornby LMS Princess Royal class. Now this is quite rough, I think this is a very very early sample, there's no separately fitted detail or any decoration to show at this point, it really is just the rough body shell, but as you can see it is at least progressing. Hornby have mentioned that this is due for release later in the year. Now, I'll be very, very surprised if that's true, given the early stage that it seems to be at right now. 
However, Hornby have already made some very, very quick turnarounds this year, haven't they? With the Terrier, for example, and also the Peckets, which are supposed to be coming soon. So who knows, maybe we will be seeing the Princess this year. I guess only time will tell on that. Also, Hornby have displayed some decorated samples of the highly coveted Class 156 in the very complex Royal Air Force livery, which looks absolutely superb. It certainly looks like it's coming along well. And unlike the Princess, it looks like that one is more or less ready to go as far as my untrained eye is concerned. And finally, we have seen a sample of their upcoming Class 87 in the Virgin Trains guys. Obviously, the BR Blue version and a different version has already been released, so the models themselves are already out there. But the Virgin version looks to be pretty good as well and that's coming soon. Okay, next up then, a little bit of a mention for Oxford Rail, who finally have a product in stock that I'm very, very excited about. It is, of course, the Howitzer Bosch Buster Railgun, which is now available in this camouflage colour scheme, which I know has been exciting quite a lot of people. And also, to go alongside that, they have bundled with it the Khaki Dean Goods in a train pack, which is now available, and I'm excited about this. I don't know if you can tell, but here we go. I've got it here, so I'm going to be reviewing this very, very soon. As it stands, I've not had this out of the box yet, so it's going to be amazing to finally get my first look and first hold of the railgun, and of course the Dean Goods in the khaki livery, so that is fantastic. Available now for a very reasonable price. Once again, I'll include a link in the description for you. Next up then, a little bit of an update from Dapol, who are showcasing their latest samples of their Class 21 and Class 29 diesel locomotive. Now previously, we've only ever seen undecorated engineering samples of these two locos, but finally Dapol are now showing some decorated samples, and there's a good range of them too, and they all look absolutely superb, so it's great to see those for the first time. The other thing of note with those is the price. In fact, Hattons have these listed at the moment for £129.15 on pre-orders, which to me sounds pretty reasonable for a brand new Toad Loco. Now, obviously, they're not the hugest Loco in the world, so they're not going to be that expensive, to be honest. However, that doesn't seem too bad at all, does it? And in fact, I'm thinking about maybe picking one up for that price because, yeah, I do like the Class 21 and Class 29, so that's one to follow, I think. Next up then, there's a little bit of news from Hattons. In fact, two things to talk about with Hattons. First of all, regarding their upcoming Class 66. Now, there's a little bit of good news from the Class 66 project and a little bit of bad news. The bad news is that the expected delivery has now been moved to December, which was previously August or September, I think. It is now December. Now, a problem with the printed circuit boards inside them has caused this, apparently. There was supposedly an error with them, which meant that the lighting wouldn't function as intended on all modes. And obviously, lesser companies would have just said that's fine and produced them like that anyway. But not Hattons. They're actually taking the time to redesign things and make sure that the lights function as they're supposed to on all different modes, regardless of the decoder. They're certainly not saying, no, you've got to use this specific decoder or that specific decoder if you want the thing to work properly. They're trying to make it universally compatible, which is absolutely top-notch. Very pleased about that. So we've taken the decision to redo the boards, and that's meant that we can have full independent lighting on all modes. So if you're using it on analog, with a two function, four function, six function, or full 12 function sound decoder, you'll be able to independently control the lights. So it's great to see that they're not settling for any less than perfection on the Class 66. And of course, knowing Hattons, we would all expect nothing less. Also, something that is available right now from Hattons is a brand new Hattons bundle. Now, if you remember, I've already covered one of the Hattons bundles, a starter set, basically, which included a train set and a station. Check out the video if you want. I will put a link to it up there. But this next bundle is a slightly more elite bundle. It includes an Oxford Rail Janus Shunter. As you can see, that looks like this. It's not this one in the train pack or in the bundle. It's a slightly different one. Allied Steel, I think it is. Allied Steel, rather. And it also comes with three wagons. Now, I can't remember what the RRP for the Janus Shunter on its own is. I'll put it there so that you can see. But the price for the entire bundle from Hattons, plus three Oxford wagons, I think they're Oxford wagons, the price for all four items is less than £70. It's £69, something like that. So absolutely crazy bargain. It's almost like getting the wagons for free and still getting a reduction on the loco itself. So pretty astonishing stuff. I'm thinking about probably trying to get one of those myself as well because I do love the Oxford Janus shunters. They're very decent things for the money, I think. Another little update from KR Models, which is the company producing the GT3 gas turbine. They have made an announcement for an announcement. So over the next month or so, there is going to be a new product announced according to their Facebook page. So very excited to find out what that's going to involve. 
Also, they've announced that the tooling has now started for the GT3. As far as I could find, that's all we know. There's no more information about that at the moment. However, that's a very good sign. It means that things are progressing and hopefully we will get to see this loco over the next year or so, or hopefully a little quicker. Very, very exciting times with that. Next up then, a quick mention for something that I don't really talk about very much, and that is 009. But this time, a, a, well, a company called Pico, in partnership with Kato, has announced two new models, which I am quite familiar with, having visited them in real life. Two models from the Festiniog Railway. The first one is going to be the Small England class, which is a little 040 TT. We'll talk about what TT stands for in just a second. Very old-fashioned little things built in the 1860s, I believe, so very, very old-fashioned. Only six of them were ever built. They are tank engines, but they have tenders too, so there are tanks on board, but they do run around with tenders on them, which is really quite interesting. The estimated price for those is £150, which suggests that this will be very, very special indeed, but only time will tell. We'll be very interested to see, I'm sure, what those are going to be like. The other loco that Pico and Cato have announced is the Double Fairly, I think that's how you say it, which is also from the Festiniog Railway, and I do have a video of those too. Here we are, I'll put a link up there if you want to see them on there. I can't remember whether they featured, I think they did, but I can't, I, I won't guarantee it. So these are quite complex, in fact they have two sets of driving wheels, if I remember correctly, um, but very, very lovely things. They haven't dared even estimate a price for that at the moment, I'm sure it's going to be very expensive, but of course it is a little bit of something special that. So uh, yes, worth a mention, I don't talk about 009 very often, but I thought that was at least worth talking about because they do look like they're going to be very impressive models. Finally then, just a quick heads up for some of the larger train fairs and exhibitions which are going to be happening over the next month. Now there are quite a lot as always, so if you want to find specific train fairs and events that are going on around exactly where you are, you're best to look it up for yourself just so you don't miss anything. But here are a few of the more key ones, a few of the larger ones. So on Saturday the 7th of August we have the Ray Heard Model Railways Exeter Toy and Train Fair, which is at the Maxford Centre in Exeter, which is going to be quite a big one as far as I could tell. Also on Sunday the 18th, so that's the following day, we have the Chris Dye Affairs Mega Cornwall Toy and Train Fail at the Bodmin Leisure Centre, which again looks as though it was going to be a, quite a large one. On Monday the 26th of August, there is the Bridge North Toy and Model Collectors Fair at the Bridge North Le Leisure Centre. They're all at leisure centres, it seems, which was the biggest yet. I think there's 75 uh, traders, I think, due to be arriving there, so that's a very, very large one. And then finally, on the 8th of September, there's going to be a big swap meet at the GCR, the Great Central Railway, at the Corn and Woodhouse Station. Again, quite a few traders due to be appearing there, so that should be quite a, the event as well. For the time being, though, that is basically all of the news I've got to share with you. Quite a lot to talk about this time. In fact, I couldn't fit everything I wanted to talk about in. However, if there's something I've missed that you think is worth a mention, do let me know down in the comments and I will cover that next time if you like. For now, though, thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. Hope you enjoyed that as always, and I will see you soon for some more videos. All right, cheers, folks. Take care of yourselves.